Early this morning, the legislature concluded a protracted and a very difficult legislative session. I'm very relieved that they did conclude uh, at this point, and that in contrast to 2011, the last time we had a budget bills and a Republican majority in the House and Senate, uh, we went to a government shutdown. So I appreciate the leaders choosing a different course of action this year and getting the bills and everything resolved uh, early this morning. As is the nature of a divided government, uh, probably everybody who was involved in this session is, goes, is going home unhappy about something. I'm unhappy about features in just about every one of the bills that we finally negotiated, and that, again, is the province of divided government with people, all of whom have their election certificates, who have very different views about what's best uh, for the future of Minnesota. I want to thank my staff and uh, commissioners. It's just been phenomenal. I, I just uh, can't say enough about how extraordinary they have been through hours and hours and working literally around the clock. Uh, a couple of them were on the phone with me uh, this morning from 12.30 to 1.30 a.m. with the Speaker, with the Senate Majority Leader, with the Senate Minority Leader, and their staffs working out the final details of the uh, Health and Human Services Bill, which shows how protracted and detailed some of these uh, negotiations were. I'm going to take, I'm going bass fishing this afternoon and tomorrow, and tomorrow morning up in uh, Mille Lacs, long planned as the opener, and I want to highlight the fact that while well, Mille Lacs has its challenges with walleye fishing, it has fantastic bass fishing, some of the very best anywhere in the world. So I'm looking forward to that coming back tomorrow, and then I'm going to go uh, to, back to focus on the various bills. Tomorrow afternoon, myself, meeting with staff on Sunday afternoon, Monday afternoon, and then uh, Tuesday, uh, have until midnight to sign the or not sign the various bills, and I'm, I'm genuinely undecided on, on all of them. We haven't had a chance, my staff and I, to review the final language, to review the final dollars on some of the, the bills. So I'm just uh, not going to make those decisions until we've had a chance to go through our due diligence, uh, which will conclude sometime on, on Tuesday. But I'll point out a couple of features that I find particularly objectionable. The tax bill prioritizes the needs of the wealthiest Minnesotans and large corporations over working and uh, other middle-income middle Minnesotans. The estate tax, the uh, tobacco tax breaks, permanently freezing the CIA levy, which will have serious financial consequences for the state in the years ahead. And then inexplicably, given that they had a $660 million bill, which is below what the, the Republican leaders said they wanted throughout the uh, process, they shifted $80 million of prepayments for LGA into the next biennium to deal with their problem with the tails for the 20, uh, 21, 22, was it 19, 19, 19 20, 21, 22 uh, biennium. For that $80 million, we could have uh, extended the working family credit, which I'd proposed, which instead got whittled down to a, just a tiny fraction. We also proposed raising revenues by closing some of the corporate tax loopholes, the special treatment that Minnesota gives to income earned abroad by companies and then brought into Minnesota. We don't, uh, don't even uh, treat that as, we treat it more favorably than the federal government. We were proposing to conform Minnesota to the federal treatment, uh, which would raise about $60 million in the next biennium and even more uh, about the same thereafter. Uh, that was turned down too. So then we, given those priorities, ran into the problems that we had with targets that were below what I wanted, what we had proposed, but 
everything was dictated from that point on by the tax bill that they insisted upon. Uh, higher education, just to illustrate one, I feel very disappointed with what they were willing to provide for the University of Minnesota and the Minnesota State and for financial aid that was uh, far less than, than those institutions requested. It's going to put extreme pressure on tuitions uh, at all the campuses, and it's going to make it more difficult for students and their families to afford the cost of higher education. The preemption bill is just uh, shameful to... I said a couple weeks ago I was going to veto the preemption bill. Republican majorities in the House and Senate knew that. And they chose to send me a bill with, linked, uh, with unrelated subjects. The pension bill for the present and, and pre present uh, state and local public employees and the retirees uh, trying to take away the family uh, leave or the parental uh, leave so provision that we've put in place for state employees, which, which would have the effect of telling women who are about to deliver their babies and uh, those who are currently on leave that uh, that benefit will be uh, just abruptly cut, cut off, taken away from them uh, at this stage in their pregnancy or in their immediate afterbirth is just uh, just cruel, just cruel to do that to, to good people who uh, depend upon that, that income during that critical time of their lives and are going to have it arbitrarily taken away uh, as part of a political gambit. I think that's all I'll conclude what I'll say about it now and be glad to respond to questions. Governor, how do you respond to the criticism that you spent, you know, the better part of two weeks in a room um, negotiating what led to the bills that are now headed to your desk? Um, and, and now you're here saying you, you don't know what you'll do about them. Well, uh, we spent uh, up until Friday morning, when I came into the office Saturday morning, I was certain in my own mind that the legislature was going to do, the Republican majorities were going to do what they had said they were going to do, which is to send me another set of bills uh, without any input from my staff, my commissioners, myself. And uh, we're going to have a showdown that was going to go into June. Uh, much to my surprise, the leaders indicated Saturday morning they wanted to work with my administration to, to develop a bills that, that could be signed. So we began that process Saturday morning and have been engaged in that for the last uh, six days. Within the parameters of the budget targets that they had set, which, uh, to which I had not agreed, so that really defined uh, the scope of, of the negotiations. We were able to get some additional money for higher education for, for E12, but it left us uh, in a position of always trying to push push the boulder up the hill in order to get uh, something closer to what I had proposed, uh, closer to what the midpoint, midpoints of most of these bills were. And again, once they had uh, established the, their parameters with the tax bill, and which was their overwhelming priority, everything else had to conform to that and, and the need for a balanced budget. So. And then, of course, they put policy provisions in, um, many of which we were successful in, in removing, some of which remained uh, that we that I strongly object to, but which they uh, insisted upon. And in the process of negotiating back and forth, uh, there were parts of it that I reluctantly agreed to that I'm very unhappy with, and there are parts that they agreed to that I'm sure they're very unhappy with as well. But that's, again, the nature of divided government. By saying that you are genuinely undecided, does that mean that some of these bills might be candidates for a veto? And if they are, does that mean that there might have to be another 
special session to pass more budget bills? Well, I've said I'm genuinely undecided. I, I never committed to sign any of these final 11 bills. I haven't had a chance to review them myself. My staff is uh, in the process of reviewing them now. You know, we, we didn't see a f final language on bills. As I said, the human services one was still being negotiated at 1.30 this morning. So, I might, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen them. We haven't looked to see if there are any errors or corrections. We haven't looked to see if the the numbers and the bill conformed to what we understood. I mean, I'm just not going to take a position on any of the bills. So we have three days, uh, one of which is, is a federal holiday, but that's what the way the law reads. So I've got a very short time till Tuesday at midnight to, to assess the bills, and I'm just not going to uh, speculate about what I might or might not do until I have a chance to, to give them the consideration they need. Responsible if the state goes and shut down if you do veto any of the budget bills? I'm not going to deal with hypotheticals. So let's, you know, next Tuesday late afternoon or Wednesday morning, first thing, uh, I'll make my decisions, then we can talk about the real implications of that and not about speculation of what might or might not happen. Governor, with respect, you're well aware that if the state doesn't have a budget, if they, they can live without a tax bill, but if the state doesn't have a budget, shutdown is around the corner. Does that not weigh on you? Is oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As I say, I appreciate very much the, the, the leaders, uh, again, to my surprise but delight, agreed on Saturday morning that they were going to not just send me another round of bills that they knew I was going to veto, but which would have forced a a protracted stalemate, take us into June and very possibly up to the threshold of another shutdown. I appreciate very much that they, you know, expressed and carried out a willingness to, to negotiate with us. And, you know, that, that does, uh, the fact that it, it would preclude, if I sign the bills that involve the state uh, agency funding, which I think is pretty much all of them, uh, absolutely, that would not, not uh, and require a, a brinksmanship and a possible shutdown. Governor, are you concerned about the status of the health care access fund? You know, it's going to drain down. It's, uh, will sunset in a few years? Well, using the fund enabled us to avoid another $350 million of cut to health and human services for uh, services and, and payments that affect real Minnesotans' lives. I mean, I regret the constraint that was put on that uh, Bill by you know the, again the overall budget realities, but uh, you know the fund has been generating uh, consistently a surplus the last uh, few years, and uh, which has exceeded the pro the projections. I have no reason to believe that won't uh, occur again. I will have to see if, it, if that changes. The real issue with the healthcare access fund is it's going to terminate in December of 2019, and. I don't think I proposed in my budget that uh, that be continued. It didn't go anywhere this session, and it probably is not going to be seriously considered until the 2019 legislative session when everybody involved, legislators and whoever's governor, are going to have to look uh, over the brink of what the results would be if that is terminated, in which case, whatever surplus is in the fund would be exhausted fairly quickly. And of course, we don't know what the federal government is going to do either. So I, you know, I believe the, the health care access fund is being used responsibly and of necessity to avoid even even more drastic cuts in in people's uh, services and payments, and that is in sound financial condition until December of 2019 comes around. Governor, with regard to teachers, a number of them were protesting here throughout the week. Uh, asking you to veto all the bills. Uh, they seem to be unhappy with the E through 12 bill. I'm just wondering, what do you say to those teachers that are unhappy with the way it turned out? Well, the legislature, uh, through respect of the House and Senate, came in at 1.25 and 1.5% on the formula. I'd propose 2%. We got the 2% for each of the next two years. Uh, successfully fended off what were uh, two of the Republican caucuses and, and very important members' top priorities, which were the vouchers and the uh, contributions to f funds that would uh, contribute to private uh, school scholarships. Uh, those were major, major concessions that 
we were able to, to gain uh, from, from Republicans. And, and uh, you know, I mean, everybody has reasons to be unhappy about, and we kept the $50 million for pre-K, we call it, uh, uh, what is it, plus? School, School readiness right. plus, thank you. It was a long night for all of you too, I'm sure. Uh, so did we get everything we wanted there? No, I mean, I, I had proposed a, a spending target for E12 that was a couple hundred million dollars higher than what uh, they would agree to. And as I said, we were able to put it up a little bit, not nearly enough, but given, uh, given the uh, aversion that many in the two caucuses, Republican caucuses, have toward public schools and public school teachers. We, we came out of it as well as we possibly could have, but I mean, certainly features there that I'm sure other, uh, others are going to be unhappy with. There are going to be features in every one of these bills that people who care about them are going to be unhappy with. That's, that's a given. That's unavoidable given uh, the divided government, people with starkly different uh, and sincerely held views. So, you know, that's just the reality. Process questions. You mentioned Tuesday is your deadline. These bills haven't been presented to you yet, have they? And so it wouldn't be Tuesday until they're presented. Secondarily, the special session bills, you actually have 14 days to decide. Are you saying you're going to decide on all of these next week? Uh, very good question. The, uh, we're told we're going to get all the bills today. Uh, I don't understand why Sundays are not, do not count. I don't understand why a national holiday doesn't count, but it, I'm told it doesn't so that we have then Saturday, sun, Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. You're right that there's a, a lack of clarity about whether it's three days or 14 days uh, to veto the ones that are act, sign the ones that are in the uh, special session, but I still vividly remember uh, Governor Carlson, 1991, and I'm not going to, you know, take any chances. Uh, and I think people deserve a decision promptly. So uh, by the end of Tuesday, we'll, I'll have made those decisions. One more, one more process question. Obviously, you, the agreement was they would finish up by Wednesday, 7 a.m. They finished up Friday at 4 a.m. Does that make any difference to you? Were you upset at that time management? Well, I mean, we can go back to time management, which is, you know, a, process question, and I'll leave it. I know the different legislative leaders, I've read their comments, have different views of, of you know, what's responsible for that. What's important to me is they got done. You know, after, despite the fact that the, the first time that I've had an agree, agreement, which I've had for every special session, they had a time deadline that it wasn't, wasn't honored. But they were working hard at it and consistently at it, and as long as they were engaged in that process of finishing off the bills that were still pending and there wasn't uh, extraneous uh, other bills or amendments being added that would have really uh, torqued the, the process, I was willing to, to go along with that because I wanted them to get done and I, I congratulate them for doing so. Governor, a lot of people are reflecting on the secrecy and the non-transparency of the process, the slipping in and out of language at the last minute that the legislators weren't able to see this stuff consolidation of decision-making in a few hands. They're saying that this process is fundamentally broken. It was built on consensus that hasn't existed for 25 years. Is there any turning back from this point, or do you disagree with that premise? Well, this is my last uh, budget session. Uh, I, you know, I can think about previous ones that have been finished a lot better. I think of previous ones that have been finished uh, a lot worse. You know, the nature of the process is at the very end, everything has to get decided. And when, especially when you have uh, opposite, you know, leadership and government, which, you know, people don't compromise until they absolutely have to. And they don't absolutely have to until they reach the end. And the way things have gone in recent years, even that is not the kind of absolute deadline that it has been in the past. So you get everything, you know, having to be worked out, uh, you know, should it be in a public setting? I can make that case. It hasn't been in my 40 years in state government. So I don't know what a better process is. There are people who are advocating for you know, that kind of transparency a month or so ago. I never heard about it from them when we got into the real nitty gritty. But uh, you know, it's certainly a deficiency, certainly a deficiency in the process that there's so much decided. And so many legislators who 
have the same election certificates as, as others uh, who are you know, excluded from those deliberations alike. I know what that's like. I was 100th in seniority in the U.S. Senate. I know what it's like to you know, have a, something debated on the floor and then go into behind closed doors and come out looking very different from what, what I'd, I'd fought for. So I, I, I really understand that frustration. I don't know what the better solution is than the next governor and legislature in 2019 or certainly, you know, should, should take a look at it. What are your thoughts on the billion dollar bond though? Do you think that's something that you could sign at this point? Uh, again, I'm just not going to prejudge any, anything I have, have to look at. I think a lot of negotiation went into that, all four of the leaders and caucuses because the the DFL caucuses had to be in, involved in that. There was a lot of, a lot of back and forth. Um, but I'm glad it got up to as, as high as it did. It went over the for 600 million, then 800 million that the House had proposed, and it's just under a billion. It's got many, many really good uh, projects that, that really should have you know been funded a year ago. So we're already behind the curve and. I'm encouraged, I don't hear any commitments, but there'll be another bonding bill next year, which we'll, we'll need just to start to catch up for the delays in so, so many of these projects. You look at the ones that were not funded, and you know, some of them, is just, it's just a shame that they weren't because they're so uh, badly needed. So anyway, it's a overall good bill, I think, and, uh, but again, I'm, I'm not gonna make a final decision until Tuesday. Governor, how, uh, how concerned are you about this uh, kind of general lack of surplus now? Would you consider asking Myron and the state economist to do uh, another revenue uh, projection forecast before the next scheduled one? Well, that's a whole elaborate process. I have to defer to uh, Commissioner Franz. You can certainly comment. But, you know, that, that's not just the economist plucking a, a number out of her head, although she's got a very good brain. But it, <laughs> it's... Uh, but you know it's a very elaborate process, and it has no, you know, legal standing until, you know, the, no, so the current forecast is superseded by the one at the end of November. I, I can question the, and of course some of it is because they have to close the books on 17, and that takes like two months into I think into August. And I mean there are reasons for that, but it is one of the, you know, uncertainty factors that you got to forecast at the end of. February, and then you don't have, a, and that's the basis for the decisions for a biennium that hasn't even started yet. And you've got you know, next end of next November a revision to that forecast, which, if it changes, is going to require the legislature next year to come back and make the necessary adjustments. But I haven't spent a lot of time contemplating that uh, possibility between 130 and 130, 130 and 130. <laughs> The uh, adjourned earlier this morning. Uh, Minority Leader Hortman said, with Republicans in control of the House and the Senate, they may be the best budgets that we could have got through. How do you weigh that against some of the issues that you've laid out this afternoon with the bills? Well, I, I would agree with that observation. I mean, I, I think some people, act in some cases, a lot of people want me to veto entire bills because there's, you know, one or two provisions that they, they strongly dislike. and. I, my response to them is, I, I, there are provisions in every one of those bills I strongly dislike. Um, but the question is, you know, you come back uh, in the third week, fourth week of June, to try. I think it's unrealistic to think they would come out, come back out with better bills. And meanwhile, uh, MMB would have to issue layoff notices to every state employee, and DNR would have to stop taking reservations for. Uh, parks and and uh, campgrounds for the rest of the, the summer. I mean, there are all sorts of other serious consequences, and then you really do get into a brinksmanship, where both sides are holding out for that final advantage. And having been through that before, and and knowing how destructive it is to to to, to every so many people's lives. I mean, I think the fact that we we're able to they were able to get finished uh, this morning. Yeah, is a very big improvement over, as I said, 2011, which is the other comparable, you know, two uh, Republican majorities and, and myself. And I would agree with Representative Hortman. I think this is probably, you know, it's, it's far from what I would like to see. It's far from what probably the uh, majority leaders would like to see. 
and the minority leaders, but that's, a, that's the unavoidable reality of divided government. So if, that's a, if that's the unavoidable reality, why aren't you saying you'll just sign these bills where you personally were talking to lawmakers at 1 o'clock in the morning, I, told, I was told, and have read some of these bills personally before they went to the floors? Why aren't you just saying you'll sign them? Well, because why should I uh, rush to uh, judgment? Be, we, we couldn't get language uh, uh, throughout the week, this week. We couldn't get spreadsheets. We couldn't get budget, global budget targets for the following biennium. Until what was it? Was it Wednesday or Thursday? That you got that one, and you had, she, they made it, She had to write it. And my chief of staff had to write it down. But even it wasn't even writing. She just they just gave her the numbers, and she had to write them down. That was the extent of the target. So I mean, we just haven't, and we haven't reconciled those as we found last time, last, two years ago, with the tax bill. You know, there was a, a significant error, and you know that undid the. The bill is in my judgment. So I'm, I'm just not going to rush to judgment in this. And we deserve, they've had five months. We deserve three days to assess uh, the final products. Governor, given the fact that you, um, uh, you tried many times with legislative leaders last year to get special sessions to fix the tax bill and various other things, how much does that weigh into your calculus as to whether to veto these bills to call them all back and try and get an agreement to call them all back by July 1st, should you veto one of these bills? Well, very definitely. And also the fact that for the first time in my the five sessions now, the special sessions have called, the, the agreement that six of us signed, the lieutenant governor and the four leaders myself, all signed, that it would end by 7 a.m. On, on Tuesday morning was, or Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning was not honored. So if I were to call them back again, I would have no expectation that, that whatever limit we agreed upon would be uh, abided to. Now, again, I, there were extenuating circumstances in this time, in th this point in time, and as long as they were working diligently, a uh, little bit around the clock to reach a conclusion in a, in a very difficult situation, I was willing to go along with that, but it certainly would give me pause in the future. Senator Bogner is, uh well, on that bill, public safety, it was uh, the House Republican Caucus's number one, number one, and number one priority. And we offered various uh, exchanges for that, and, and uh, those were rejected. And you know, one consideration, I, I understand the feelings of people who feel like they were just slapped in the face. I mean, I've, I've said over and over, and we put it in writing to the leaders, we, we do not, under current statute, have the authority to initiate changes in driver's license. Is this, this actually putting it in the statute changes nothing. And in fact, either way, with or without that language, it would have to go to the legislature to make that uh, that authorization to make it possible. So the, and I pointed this out again and again to the, those who are just adamant, you know, this doesn't do anything. It's just a public slap in the face, poke in the eye to, to people who are trying to, you know, make their lives work so they can work. And um, it's one of those, I think, mean-spirited and unnecessarily nasty Actions that uh, there are other examples in the in the bills, but um, that's the way it happened. You said all session long that you've been concerned about the state slipping back into some fiscal instability. Do you see these bills, particularly the tax bill, as as risky, Matt? Well, I'm, I swear I'm going to assess the tax bill over the weekend, and Commissioner Bowley, who was just heroic, Commissioner Bowley and Commissioner Franz were heroic in, in hours and hours and hours of negotiations, Mr. Bowery with the tax chairs, one of whom was uh, made uh, Donald Trump look reticent in terms of his tweeting. Um, but, you know, I have to, again, I have to look at him and talk with, with her and, and see where things stand. But yes, I am very concerned about the fiscal stability of the state for the not well in the next item, I think, but again, they shifted $80 million just on paper from the uh, 20, what was it, 20, 21, 22 by item to the 1920 just, you know, just uh, for their tails. So it shows the tails, they know too, the tails are, are escalating. 
and the years uh, following, uh, you know, is, is something I'm going to look at very carefully. Readers. Are you talking about Representative Davids or Senator Champ? Uh, Senator Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Chamberlain, yes, yeah, Senator Chamberlain. I mean, all you need to do is read his tweets. Fortunately, I don't read tweets, <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I'm way, I'm, I'm way, way too old to be offended by anything somebody says personally about me. Senator Bach has advised you to veto the tax bill. How much weight are you going to give that advice? Well, he has, I read his uh, statement. He has, you know, those are, he has good reasons for that. The thing with the tax bill is there's some very good features to it. The agriculture property tax, uh, the child care tax credit, which I had proposed. Uh, and there's some awful features, a uh, couple of which I enumerated previously. So it, it's, you know, it's a good bill and it's a, a, be, very, ba a very good bill, a very bad bill. And you know, how do you weigh that in the balance? I can't line it in a, a tax bill. Governor, throughout the session, you've made a point of saying that these aren't just numbers. Um, the, the what? I'm sorry. These aren't just numbers in these bills that these affect real people's lives. Um, when we asked the Republican majority about the savings that they project to make some of these numbers work, uh, they say it's up to your cabinet, it's up to your agencies to find the waste, fraud, and abuse. Are, are you going to come back to us and tell us that you can't at some point? Well. I can't, I can't, I lost count of the number of ob objective national uh, experts who said that we have one of the very best managed states in, in the country. Uh, and a lot of these criticisms I, I, were, ne were never expressed by Republican legislators during the eight years that Governor Plenty was governor. So, I mean, a lot of this is just partisan political sniping. And I said all along, if you are things Everything we're doing in state government was, is proscribed by, by statute. You know, previous legislators, previous governors, and we, we don't make this stuff up. So it's like if you want to cut a budget by 15, 20 percent, then tell us what you want that agency not to do. And they just totally un unwilling to do it. So I, well, you guys figure it out. We're going to pick a number, and you're going to figure that out. The Health and Human Services one was spent hours. I mean, I mean literally hundreds of people hours, uh, debating you know, which were assumptions or projections that were real, realistic, which ones weren't. And they'd say, well, 25 million savings here. And Commissioner Piper would say, well, you can't do that because of this requirement, and it affects this, and it affects federal funding here. I mean, all the details that, that they are largely unaware of. And so, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll get a chance next week to talk in, in more detail, detail, but we said these are not numbers. These are real people's lives. And, and the, the cuts you're enforcing, particularly in human services, are going to affect real people. The, the, the lack of funding for the University of Minnesota and, and the Minnesota State campuses is going to affect real tuitions that real students and their families have to pay. So the, this isn't about numbers. It's about people. And I've said that over and over, and I'll continue to say it over and over. on these bills before you, what do you see as sort of the best outcome of this session? Well, again, the fact that it ended. <laughs> 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 and I mean that sincerely. The fact that it didn't go to a, sh a showdown and a shutdown is, is a significant improvement, and I give all four leaders credit for that. Um, that's probably the good one to end on. See you next Tuesday. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Governor. If I don't catch a pass, it could be a much better, run much better. <laughs> <laughs>